don't discount yourself. I didn't do what I'm doing now for 14 years because I didn't believe being labeled educable, mentally retarded, failing in the fifth grade, put back to the fourth grade, and no college education that I can compete with people with PhDs and MBAs. Mm -hmm. And so for 14 years, a lot of people say they have no regrets. Biggest regret that I have, that I disapproved of myself for 14 years. And then, there's a coincidence, it's God's way of staying anonymous. I went to a training and a guy was speaking. And Mike Williams had already said, hey, Brownie, you know why you go see Zig Ziglar and Dr. Robert Schuller and Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, who wrote The Power of Positive Thinking? I said, because I like the message. He said, no. He said, you like to help people. That's in you. You're always holding court here at the radio station. And you got a funny laugh, man. And so he just kept saying that to me. And and I was at an event and a guy was speaking and it just stopped like a spell came over him. He said, there's somebody here who should be doing this. He said, I do it because I make a lot of money. And he said, I love to make money. He said, but you, you want to change lives and you can make money too, young man, young lady. And he said, you know who you are. And then he paused again. He said, the reason I'm standing up here holding this microphone and you are seated out there. I represent the thoughts you have rejected for yourself. That hit me right between the eyes. Mm -hmm. I began to cry. At that time, this is in 1980, I called Mike Williams. The telephone call was a dime. Mike, he said, yes. I said, I'm not rejecting myself anymore. Do you hear me? He said, Brownie, calm down. Listen to me, man. I'm not rejecting myself anymore. I said, will you help me? One of the things I teach, ask for help. Not because you're weak, but because you want to remain strong and ask for help mm. and don't stop until you get it. I practice psychoneuroimmunology, your mindset, your diet, and positive relationships. Giving yourself a healing, nurturing environment strengthens your immune system and allows you to stay here longer and do your great work. Mm -hmm. One of the things I ask people when we're training, what's your strategy for being here? You have to have a game plan. Being here is not a given, and I don't think doctors should tell people that you're terminally ill. What I think they should say is my knowledge and ability to help you has terminated. Now you need to explore some other options. Get some coaching from someone who's experienced, who's operated on the level that you want to go at. When I saw Mike Williams, who wrote the book, The Road to Your Best Stuff, he was a powerful speaker and I loved his content and the naturalness of his personality and he had fun. And so I said, I want to be like that. So I'm a combination of Mike Williams and Earl Nightingale, who was well read, uh, and Zig Ziglar, who had a lot of energy. And Jim Rowan has some profound quotes, uh, just a great thinker, a statesman. And so, and then, but I also trained to, to be able to communicate. You know, like Dr. King was a great orator. Malcolm X was a great communicator. And so I integrate all of these. I believe if you love this, you will study the people that master it and you will evolve into creating your own voice with your own energy. I believe that if we multiply the voices of hope, messengers of hope that will provide a message of peace and a message of hope when there's hope in the future that gives you power in the present. I believe that we can reduce the recidivism rate. I believe that we can reduce the number of our young men and women that's in the military who are committing suicide on a regular basis. I believe that we can begin to decrease crime and the violence that's taking place all across this country because Evil prevails when good men and women do nothing. Nothing happens until it's communicated. In the beginning was the word. And so my goal is to multiply the voices out here that will be bring some words that can help us to get a different vision of wow. ourselves. I encourage people to read at a minimum of 30 to 40 pages of something positive every day to program your mind. And, and all of us can do that. We can go to the library and check out books. When I think about Og Mandino, who wrote The Greatest Salesman in the World, he was on the verge of committing suicide. Went to the library, read the book Think and Grow Rich, and his life turned around. So reading and programming ourselves, the reason that, that most people should do that, psychologists say that that 80 86% of our, our self-talk is negative and it goes undetected by the conscious mind. That's why we're taught, be ye not conformed to this world, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Listen to recordings and things that are positive. Go on YouTube and find things that, that will begin to empower you. And 
minimize the distractions in your life. We have so many distractions. The weapons of mass distractions cause most people not to begin to live their lives from the inside out, but from the outside in. You know, there's an African proverb that said, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm. Shakespeare said, the fort dear Brutus is not in our stars, but in ourselves, and we are underlings. So you have to program yourself or your mind will be programmed. The other thing is that have goals that's beyond your comfort zone because in order to do something you've never done, you've got to become someone you've never been. You've got to become a risk taker. This God said, if you're not willing to risk, you can't grow. And if you can't grow, you can't become your best. And if you can't become your best, you can't be happy. And if you can't be happy, then what else is there? And the other thing is upgrade your relationship. You earn within two to three thousand dollars of your closest friends. You've got to look at the people in your life and ask, what is this relationship doing to me? There are many people because of the toxic, negative, energy draining people in their lives. They will never be successful because those toxic relationships will compromise their power. There's a new term in psychology, in psychiatry called relational illness. There's some people that can make you sick. Now, some people might say, Les, can we change them? No, it's a full-time job, full-time job changing yourself. Don't ask what the meaning of life. Ask what is the meaning of your life. And to me, a man desires to live a meaningful life. So many young people young men today because we live in an entertainment driven culture that they they don't have a vision of themselves or what it takes to be a man i studied mr washington he was one figure that i looked at and how he held himself how he spoke how he dressed and i said i want to be like that when i become a man i i want to live my life in such a way that my mother would say I'm proud of Leslie, that my children would say, I'm proud of you. Somebody asked me the other day, what has been your greatest accomplishment? You've won all the top awards in speaking. You've spoken to over 80,000 people in the Georgia Dome, 30,000 in Poland. Uh, what, what has been your greatest accomplishment? I said, when my children got together and said, Daddy, when you're in pursuit of the dream and all those special occasions that you missed, we were angry with you. Mm -hmm. But when we see what you have accomplished, We've graduated from college with no student loans. When we see the sacrifice, the price of what it takes to make a dream happen, and how you started with so little, we're so proud of you. And we want you to know that. That, to me, was the greatest achievement that I've had. I spoke about three weeks ago in Detroit, and my, young, uh, my second oldest son, Patrick, was with me. And he said, you know what? You're a special guy. You're a special guy for you to come in here and speak to these people and train. And they didn't pay you anything. And you spoke to them and gave them everything you had as if you had received a check. He said, you're a special guy. Mm. I admire you. When your children tell you they admire you, that to me is special. I wish I had not waited. 14 years. Somebody said, if you want to lose something, hmm. lose money. You can get that back. Eight out of 10 millionaires have been financially bankrupt. Walt Disney filed bankruptcy seven times. Oh. But don't lose time. There were 14 years I sat on the sideline. 14 really? years I said, I don't have an investor in me like Tony Robbins. 14 years it said, I don't have an MBA or a PhD and, and I can't compete with these guys. I have the complexion of rejection. And so I regret that. Because there are some people that maybe if they'd heard my voice, they would not have turned to drugs. If they'd heard my voice, their lives would have taken a different direction. And I can't get those 14 years back. That haunts me. And maybe, I think that drives me when I speak with such energy. I'm, I'm trying to make up for that time.